The AMS 1117 is a small voltage regulator that is available in a number of voltages. We're interested in the 1.2 volt. Laying flat like this, the pins are numbered left to right. One, two, three. The pins are spaced 2.3 millimeters apart, which works out to 90 thousandths of an inch which is just shy of the 100 thousandths that the holes in the prototype board are. And this chip was previously pressed in a prototype board and you'll notice a slight deflection of the pins from that process. I have not encountered any issues with this. The AMS uh, 1117 is positioned upright on the prototype board. It's usually nestled amongst resistors and diodes and capacitors. So here's a tip. Seeing as that it requires um, some firm pressure to seat it there, uh, make it one of your first components so that you'll have room for your fat fingers to press it in there. And you would think that something that requires that kind of firmness to press in would stay in but uh, there will be a tendency for it to pop back out. The pins are a bit on the short side and they don't protrude past the board. So I recommend to solder the pins to hold the chip in position. We only use pins number one and number three. There's another advantage to soldering right now in that there are no uh, leads or traces in the way and you can be more assured that the solder has made it down to those pins. You know, they're a bit recessed in the board. Then when you do finalize your circuit and you come across and you're ready to tie in with your leads to complete the trace, you just remelt uh, this solder and um, you're good to go. These small trim capacitors, also known as variable capacitors, are color-coded according to their values. We're interested in the green ones, the 30 picofarad. I got a small bag of 10 of these for peanuts. The pin spacing of these is 200 thou, so they fit on the board very nicely. Here's the adjustment screw. Consideration is given in the circuit design to make sure that there is access to this adjustment even with the STM32 microcontroller position on top of the headers. I use the same plastic screwdriver as these compensation probes. It's appropriate because the adjustment is really done for the very similar purpose. It is to trim the capacitance so that the corners on the square wave will be square. A scope has its own square wave generator and it can be turned on within the settings. The output is on pin A08 of the STM32. Alligator clips from that to the center of the BNC. We should not let the small physical size of these HS series oscilloscope lead us to believe that uh, they lack in performance or features. One of those features is hardware-based AC coupling. It is achieved by this small AQI210EH solid-state relay. This small relay is able to switch a 0.1 microfarad capacitor into the input circuit and out of the input circuit all of it commanded through the H-Scope app. The pins have the proper 100 thou spacing to fit on the board. Just use uh, normal precautions when soldering. I set the soldering iron at 650 degrees Fahrenheit and I don't linger. I saved the best for last. 
The MCP6S21 is a programmable gain amplifier. It's an 8-pin chip and the pin spacing is 100 thou on this. Comes in this smaller SOT size where the pin spacing is 50 thou. This requires an adapter. Whereas this larger one can have just a socket soldered onto the board and the chip inserted in the socket. The problem is that this larger chip is a little more difficult to find online and when you do find it it's about 10 times more expensive than the smaller chip. So in the bills I tend to use the smaller one but we have to put that on an adapter. On one of these the MSOP-8. The first couple of these I put together I really struggled. I learned from my mistakes. I think I have a few useful pointers to share with you and that's what I'm going to do here. Let's start by soldering these headers on this MSOP adapter. Mission accomplished. And now comes the fun part. To solder the eight pins of this chip onto the eight pads of that adapter. Notice a small dimple on the chip. That lines up with a small arrow on the board. We're going to use a solder paste, W186. It's an alloy of 63% uh, tin, 37% lead. It melts at 183 degrees C. We will set the 858D rework station at 210 degrees C. I'm choosing not to use the very smallest nozzle so as not to create too much velocity. The air on the rework station is going to be set at number three so as not to blow this little chip around. I want to keep all the solder on the outer edges and I want to allow surface uh, tension to bring when we melt it to bring the solder towards the center. If there's any bridging it won't happen right at the base of the chip where it's almost impossible to deal with. It, it There might be some bridging and if it does it's going to occur more at the uh, ends of the uh, pins on the chip and that is uh, fairly easy to rectify. If we're lucky there won't be any bridging at all. So I'm going to smear with a utility knife a little bit of that solder, spreading it outwards. So any imperfections can be touched up with a soldering iron at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and you draw parallel to the pads away from the chip towards the outer end. It becomes very shiny when you do that. I kind of like that. There.
it looks pretty good. I can live with that. And if you have any doubts, you use a no meter and you make sure that there was no bridging. That's it. I just felt that some of these components could use a little bit more clarification. So if you liked it, hammer that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Talk to you guys soon.